The Ten Patiences, Chapter Twenty Nine. Sutra at that time, the universal worthy Bodhisattva said to all the Bodhisattvas, disciples of the Buddha, Bodhisattvas, Masattvas should embody ten kinds of patience. If they acquire these patiences, they will attain the ground of unhindered patience of all bodhisattvas, and be unimpeded and unlimited with respect to all Buddha dharmas. Commentary: Chapter twenty nine is called the Ten Patiences. The previous chapter discussed the ten spiritual powers, and the chapter before that the ten samadhis. Samadhi is needed to attain spiritual powers. In addition. You must be patient if you wish to attain them, and patience is very difficult. The Chinese character for patience is a picture of a knife blade above the heart. In other words, being patient can be as painful as when one's heart is pierced with a knife, and such pain is hard to bear. Nevertheless. One must bear it, bear what is impossible to bear. There are ten kinds of patience, hence the name the ten patiences. This chapter is chapter twenty nine of the Flower Adornment Sutra, which has eighty one rows scrolls in Chinese. At that time, after the chapter called the ten spiritual powers had been spoken, the universal worthy Bodhisattva observed the causes and conditions of the assembly. To determine what drama he should speak,、uh, speak next, he saw that the assembly's capacities and conditions were such that he ought to speak the chapter called the Ten Patiences. Thereupon, the universal worthy Bodhisattva said to all the Bodhisattvas in the assembly, "Disciples of the Buddha, Bodhisattvas, Masattvas who cultivate the Bodhisattva conduct." Accumulate a variety of virtues, and who are perfecting all, who have perfected the six paramitas and the myriad practices, should cultivate and embody ten kinds of patience. If they acquire these ten dramas of patiences, they will attain the ground of unhindered patience of all bodhisattvas, the perfectly interfused and unobstructed version of bodhisattvas. And be unimpeded and unlimited with respect to all Buddha dharmas. All Buddha dharmas will be perfected, interfused without obstruction, full, complete, and infinite. Sutra. What are the ten? They are patience with sounds, patience with the agreeable, patience with the state of mind in which no mental objects arise, patience in perceiving all as illusions, patience. In perceiving all as mirages, patience in perceiving all as dreams, patience in perceiving all as echoes, patience in perceiving all as reflections, patience in perceiving all as conjured effects, and patience in perceiving all as the world. These ten kinds of patience have been proclaimed. Are being proclaimed and shall be proclaimed by all Buddhas in the three births of time. Commentary: What are the ten kinds of patience? They are patience with sounds, no matter what types of sounds: good sounds and bad sounds, wholesome sounds and unwholesome sounds, proper sounds and lewd sounds, pure sounds and noisy sounds. One must patiently endure them all, even if you find certain sounds. Intolerable. You have to tolerate them. You must bear it precisely because it is unbearable. If it were bearable, why would one need to bear it? For example, you may feel it is too noisy in the city with the automobiles zooming by, radios blaring, phones ringing, planes roaring overhead, and so forth. If you let these noises disturb you, then you are not maintaining your patience. If you can hear these noises without really hearing them, then, as it is said, the bustling city is the best place to cultivate. To be patient with noises in a bustling market or downtown is to have some idea. Patience with the agreeable is also patience with the adversity. 
one should be patient with what is favorable as well as with what is unfavorable. The agreeable refers to what people like. For example, someone might like music so much that he cannot help but dance as soon as he hears music being played. He might drum several feet in the air in his exuberance. It shows a lack of patience with the agreeable. One must be patient with what is agreeable and even more so with what is disagreeable. That is patience with adversity. For instance, someone might say, I can't cultivate, it's unbearable. I'm not allowed to eat a lot, sleep a lot, or wear a lot. This is too much suffering, I can't take it. Patience with the state of mind in which no mental objects arise refers to bearing the state of mind in which one neither perceives the slightest drama coming into being nor perceives the slightest drama ceasing to exist. With no coming into being, there is no ceasing to be. Patience with uh, patience in perceiving all as illusions. Don't regard anything in this world as real. If you consider it real, you will be disoriented by the state. Consider all states as illusory, since they are illusory. Why be attached to them? If you regard all states as illusory and yet allow them to disturb you, then don't you become part of the illusion. Patience in perceiving all as marriages. A marriage appears as a puddle or pool of water in the distance. But when one gets close, there is nothing there. Marriages are also unreal. Everything in the world is merely appearance without a substance. Don't mistake anything for real. Patience in perceiving all as dreams. In a dream, one strikes it rich, becomes a high official, and marries a worthy wife or husband. Life is perfect. Then one always re then realizes that it was only a dream. If you can regard all of life as a dream and bear it with this truth, you will not be afflicted. Patience in perceiving all as echoes. Echoes result from sounds. Without sounds, there are no echoes. Echoes have no real substance of their own. Patience in perceiving all as reflections. Patience in perceiving all as conjured effects. And patience in perceiving all as the world. One should regard all things as reflections, shadows, or conjured effects, empty and unreal. These ten kinds of patience have been proclaimed are being proclaimed and shall be proclaimed by all Buddhas in the three periods of time, Buddhas of the past, already described with these ten kinds of patience. Buddhas of the present are now speaking about them, and future Buddhas will explain them in the future. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience with sounds? It means that when he hears the sounds of drama being proclaimed by all the Buddhas, he is not alarmed, frightened, or overawed. Rather, with deep faith and understanding, he awakens to the drama, pursues it with delight, recollects it with a focused mind, learns and practices it, and abides steadfastly in it. This is called patience with sounds, the first kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Commentary, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva says, Disciples of the Buddha, pay attention. What constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience with sounds? It means when he hears the sounds of drama being proclaimed by all the Buddhas, he is not alarmed, frightened, or overawed. Hearing the Buddhas say that all dhammas are originally non-existent, you should not become alarmed. Hearing the Buddha say that all dhammas are infinite and inexhaustible, you should not be afraid. When you hear the Buddha say that dhammas are boundless and unlimited, you should not be overwrought and think, the Buddha dhamma is as deep as the ocean, what am I to do? This is being not alarmed, frightened, or overwrought. Rather, with deep faith and understanding, 
he awakens to the drama. So here the Buddha drama and to not be afraid is to have deep faith, insight and understanding. On the other hand, if you lack understanding and have doubts about the drama, you will feel fear. But still it with delight. Whenever you hear the drama, you are joyful and approach it with delight. Recollect it with a focused mind. This means having no ego thoughts. For example, when you recite the Suragama Mantra, you think of nothing else but the mantra, and pretty soon you've got it memorized. If you decide to recite the Drama Flower Sutra and you concentrate single-mindedly on the recitation, you will master it quickly. This is the same for the Flower Adornment Sutra or Suragama Sutra. Learns and practices it. Even after you have mastered some sutras, you still have to practice according to the drama contained in these sutras. For instance, if a sutra tells you not to let your thoughts wander, you should focus your mind. If it tells you not to lie, kill, steal, or engage in sexual misconduct, you should avoid even thinking of such behavior. And besides, and abide steadfastly in it. It means to abide steadfastly in the Buddha drama. This is called patience with sounds, the first kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience with the agreeable? The Bodhisattva ponders and contemplates all Buddha dramas, regards them impartial, impartially, and does not violate them, complies with and understands them, purifies his mind with them, abides properly in and practices them, and enters and becomes accomplished in them. This is called patience with the agreeable, the second kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Commentary Universal Worthy Bodhisattva continues Disciples of the Buddha What constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience with the, the agreeable? Patience with the agreeable encompasses patience with adversity. If people look down on you, slander you, scold you, or beat you because you study the Buddha Dharma, you must be patient and bear such treatments. Patience is a price priceless gem. If you can practice patience, you will attain the path and accomplish the various stages of cultivation. How does a Bodhisattva practice this kind of patience? The Bodhisattva ponders and contemplates all Buddha dharmas, regards them impartially and does not violate them, complies with and understands them, purifies his mind with them, abides properly in and practices them, and enters and becomes accomplished in them. The purpose of studying in any kind of Buddha Dharma is to purify the mind of defined thoughts. One abides properly in the Buddha Dharma to practice it. One enters into the Buddha Dharma to become accomplished in it. This is called patience with the agreeable, the second kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Sutra. Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience with the state of mind in which no mental objects arise? Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva perceives neither the slightest drama coming into being nor the slightest drama ceasing to be. Why is this? Where there is no coming into being, there is no ceasing to be. Where there is no ceasing to be, there is no reaching an end. When there is no reaching an end, there is freedom from defilement. Where there is freedom from defilement, there is no discrimination. Where there is no discrimination, there is no attachment to a location. Where there is no attachment to a location, there is tranquility. Where there is tranquility, there is renouncing of desires. Where there is renouncing of desires, there is an absence of effort. Where there is effortlessness, there is no longing. Where there is no longing, there is no residing. Where there is no residing, there is no going or coming. This is called patience with a state of mind in which no mental objects arise. The third kind of patience 
of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience in perceiving all as illusions? Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva realizes that all dhammas invariably, invariably are like illusions arising from causes and conditions through a single dharma. He understands that many dharmas. Through many dharmas, he understands a single dharma. Commentary Universal Worthy continues Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's third patience with a state of mind in which no mental objects arise? Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva, this great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas, perceives neither the slightest drama coming into being nor the slightest drama ceasing to be. He bears the state of not arising and non destruction in his mind. Why is this? Where there is no coming into being, there is no ceasing to be. If there is no coming into existence, how could there be a passing out of existence? Where there is no ceasing to be, there is no reaching to an end. If there is no passing out of existence, how could there be an end? Where there is no reaching an end, there is a freedom from defilement. When there is no limit or end, all defilement is left behind. Only because things reach an end does defilement exist. Where there is freedom from defilement, there is no discrimination. If we can leave defilements, that means we have left discriminations. Where there is no discrimination, there is no attachment to a location. When there are no distinctions, how could there be a place for you to attach to? Where there is no attachment to a location, there is tranquility. This is the drama of ultimate tranquility. Where there is tranquility, there is renouncing of desires. All desires of greed, anger, and delusion are gone. There are no desires for fame, the opposite sex, wealth, food, or sleep. Where there is renouncing of desires, there is absence of effort. That is, there is no deliberate effort to do or create anything. Where there is effortlessness, there is no longing or wishes. Where there is no longing, there is no residing. Where there is no residing, there is no going or coming. If there is no place that you reside, where would you be going to or coming from? This is called patience with a state of mind in which no mental objects arise. The third kind of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Universal with the Bodhisattva continues. Disciples of the Buddha, what constitutes the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's patience in perceiving all as illusions. Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva realizes that all dhammas are invariable, um, are invariably like illusions arising from causes and conditions. Through a single dharma, he understands many dharmas. Through many dharmas, he understands a single dharma. The one is many and the many are one. He understands the principle of the one and the many are mutually non-obstructive, and the many and the one are perfectly interfused. Sutra, once this Bodhisattva realizes that all dharmas are like illusions, he fathoms lands, beings, and drama realms. He realizes the equality of worlds, the equality of the appearances of Buddhas, and equality of the three Buddhas of time. He accomplishes all kinds of spiritual powers and transformations, just as an illusion is not an elephant, not a horse, not a carriage, not a pedestrian, not a man, not a woman, not a boy, not a girl, not a tree, not a leaf, not a flower, not a fruit, not earth, not water, not fire, not wind, not day, not night, not sun, not moon, not half a month, not one month, not one year, not a hundred years, not one aeon, not many aeons, not concentration, not destruction, nor is it homogeneous or nor heter heterogeneous, nor uniform, nor variable, nor broad, nor narrow, nor abundant, nor scarce, 
nos cas no finite, no infinite, no cause, no fine, no any of the various kinds of phenomena on their aspects. The various phenomena are not illusions. Illusions are not the various phenomena, yet due to illusions, various different phenomena manifest. Commentary. Universal worthy Bodhisattva goes on to say, once this Bodhisattva realizes that all dhammas are like illusions, he fathoms lands, beings, and dhammas realms. Having understood that all dhammas are illusory, he realizes that all lands, all sentient beings, and all dhamma realms are also illusory. He realizes the equality of worlds, the equality of the appearances of Buddhas, and equality of the three bereaves of time. And the fact that all these are illusory, he accomplishes all kinds of spiritual powers and transformations, which are also illusory. Just as an illusion is not an elephant in actuality, it is also not a real horse and not a real carriage. An illusory pedestrian is not a pedestrian. An illusory man is not a man. An illusory woman is not a woman. An illusory boy is not a boy. An illusory girl is not a girl. An illusion cannot be a real tree, a real leaf, a real flower, or a genuine fruit. An illusion is not made up of the actual elements of earth, water, fire, or wind. An illusion of day is not a true day. An illusion of night is not a true night. An illusion of sunlight is not real sunlight. An illusion of moonlight is not genuine moonlight. An illusory period of time is not truly half a month or one whole month. An illusion of one year is not truly one year. An illusory hundred years is not actually a hundred years. An illusory great end is not really one end. An illusion of many ends is not real either. An illusion of concentration or distraction is not true concentration or distraction. Nor is it truly homogeneous, although there may be an illusion of homogeneity. Nor is an illusion of heterogeneity really heterogeneous. Nor is an illusion uniform nor variable. In general, many appearances or manifestations based on illusions are always unreal. The Bodhisattva knows that everything is illusory, thus he is free from attachments, nor is he attached to things being broad, nor narrow, nor abundant, nor scarce, nor finite, nor infinite, nor is he attached to cause dramas, nor to find dramas, or to any of the various kinds of phenomena or their aspects. The various phenomena are not illusions. Illusions are not the various phenomena, yet due to illusions, various different phenomena manifest.